Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the CollegeWise Virtual College Fair tonight. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. I just have a few housekeeping items to mention to you this evening before we get started. First of all, we know that you have questions, so feel free to put those questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom. I would recommend that you list off the college name that you're directing that question to so they know who you're um, expecting an answer from and they can answer in a more appropriate fashion. As a reminder, this is a webinar, so that means your camera and your microphone are off, and so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. That's why it's so important to put those questions in the Q&A. And the recording of this um, presentation tonight will be available within about a week of, um, of our presentation this evening, and it'll be available on the website where you registered. So as another friendly reminder, put those questions in in the Q&A feature at the bottom, do list the college name that you're hoping will respond to you. They will be responding throughout the presentation tonight. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter. You guys are gonna hear first from Clarkson University. Great, thank you so much, Courtney. And thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope everybody is doing well. I know it's definitely a little bit of a different year. Um, so with that being said, thank you for joining us in this Zoom format. Uh, so my name is Paige Dustin. I am one of about 10 admissions counselors at Clarkson University. And we are located all the way upstate New York, almost in Canada, in Potsdam, New York. And so we are one of four college is within about 10 minutes uh, radius in upstate New York. We are located right down the road from the SUNY school, SUNY Potsdam. We're also very close to St. Lawrence University and SUNY Canton. So to just put us into perspective and where we are located. Um, so I will go into this evening a very quick presentation on what it's like to be a golden knight. And so at Clarkson University, we have about 50 plus uh, majors. And so on this screen, it seems a little busy, but we are listing all of our different majors. We have minors and concentrations that you can add into your programs to truly develop that four years that you're at Clarkson into everything that you want it to be and everything that you want to accomplish. Um, so I would say for Clarkson and all of our programs, which we are uh, a smaller university, we have about 3,200 undergraduate students altogether, um, small class sizes, which really facilitates a lot of really wonderful learning and connections with your faculty members. Um, and then every degree that we grant is a four year degree. So about 60% of our students at Clarkson come into us for the Coulter School of Engineering. So you'll see that takes up a good chunk of this screen over on the left. And some of our most popular majors are mechanical engineering, engineering and management, uh, civil engineering and chemical engineering. So you're seeing a lot of those indicated there. And then you're seeing a lot of uh, minors and concentrations that fit in very well. We actually just launched a brand new program, which I'm very excited about. Uh, it's a four plus one where our students can come in with an undergraduate program of mechanical engineering and then add on a biomedical engineering master's and complete that within one, uh, one additional year. So you're seeing that we also offer biomedical engineering as a minor and that's extremely popular for our students. I would say the next biggest set of majors that we have at Clarkson are really linked to our pre-professional programs and specifically the health sciences at Clarkson. So we have a lot of students that will come in for biology, biomolecular science, chemistry, and then they'll add on pre-med, uh, physician's assistant, physical therapy programs, and uh, pre-occupational therapy. So those four pre-professional programs are extremely popular at Clarkson. And we have three of the four of those also at the graduate level, just not the actual med school at Clarkson, but we do have a lot of great connections to several fantastic medical colleges throughout the United States. And then I would say next after that, is our Ray School of Business. It's a nationally ranked business uh, department. And so we have everything from um, supply chain, uh, human resources management, um, 
engineering and management kind of falls within this category as well. So tons of really strong business programs. Uh, the Institute for Sustainable Environment is another really phenomenal department on our campus. And they're involved with sustainability measures on campus, off campus through summer research programs. Uh, and finally, the School of Arts and Sciences, where we have again, housed uh, several of our sciences as well as our liberal arts. Uh, so Clarkson, I would say, is primarily known for our STEM programs. However, we have really fantastic liberal arts programs as well. And so on the next slide, we're going to point out really what makes Clarkson unique and really what makes up life as a golden knight. So across the board, all of the majors that you saw on the previous slide are, um, are all requiring a professional experience. And so all of our students before they graduate will have at least one internship, research opportunity, co-op or some type of study abroad. The only distinction that I make is with the School of Business, they require a co-op internship or research as well as study abroad um, or some type of global studies. So they really try to get you to build out your portfolio and get to know what a business is like in a variety of settings and across the world as well. So for a small school, we are certainly not small as far as student life. We have the last time I checked 220 different clubs, um, so tons to get involved with. I would say most popular for our athletics as well as for students to watch are our D1 men's and women's hockey games. I always joke that if you are not a hockey fan before you come into Clarkson, you will be by the time that you leave. Um, so we do have 20 different athletic teams, again, two on the D1 side, 18 on Division three side, and then tons of different intramurals and club sports, so tons of opportunities there for you as well. Um, on the top, you you're also seeing one of our speed teams, which are related to engineering. Um, this one here is our Baja car. So tons of clubs related to your major, tons of ways to get hands-on experience, both in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. And so I'll spend just a few more seconds that I have left talking about what life is like for our alumni. Um, we have a really strong connection with our alumni, really strong alumni chapters that help out our students when you graduate and get a job and you may be going going elsewhere in the United States to, uh, to work with that new employer. Um, so we have a consistent ranking as one of the top uh, one of the top colleges for early career starting salaries. So the last time we tracked our median salary is about 64,200, uh, which really, I mean, that's that's something great. And then finally, in closing, um, our 97% placement rate, looking for that return on investment that you're getting into Clarkson. Uh, that, that's a really great indicator of that return on investment you get. So with that, I will turn it over to our next college and thank you for joining. Thank you, Paige and Clarkson University. Um, audience, don't forget to put those questions in the chat, but next up you get to hear from SUNY Cortland. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa Ackerman and I am a senior admissions advisor as well as regional recruiter for SUNY Cortland. If you're not familiar with the SUNY system, we are the State University of New York and SUNY Cortland is one of 64 schools in the SUNY system. We are a small to medium sized school in the state of New York. So we've got about 7,000 total students, grad and undergrad. Each fall, we bring in about 1,200 first year freshman students and then 600 transfers. Our average class size is about 23 and then our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So we are a 7,000 student body. You still get that one-on-one -on -one time with your professors, which is always nice. Uh, location wise, we are right in central New York. So we are about 30 to 40 minutes from Syracuse and Syracuse University, 40 minutes from Binghamton University, and then about 30 minutes from Ithaca College, which you will hear from shortly. Uh, so we're kind of right in the center of a lot of different college areas and a lot of different cities and towns. So there's always things to do in Portland and in the cities around Portland. We were ranked the number one for campus safety in the state of New York. I was a student, I graduated from SUNY Portland in 2016, and I never felt unsafe on campus. We do have the blue light system, so the, the university police are always just a button away. We do have students representing 34 states and 47 countries. So we have a lot of students from the state of New York, kind of all over the state. We also have students from all over the world. As far as our admissions criteria, we are test optional this year. So we'll not be looking at SAT or ACT scores for admissions or for our merit-based scholarships. Uh, we are looking for coursework. We're looking for four years of English four years of history, three years of math, science, and foreign language. And then our average GPA is about an 86 to a 92 or a solid B student, about a 3.3 to about a 
of 3.7 is our average. As far as expenses, and if this is something that you want to take a picture of, go ahead. We do give all of our out-of-state students a, a $7,500 award per year. So if you are from out-of-state, that's definitely something to hold on to and to know. And then your junior and senior year, if you remain living on campus, we do give you an additional $2,000 for those two years. If you're an in-state New York student, um, the total cost is going to be pretty similar across the board with all SUNY schools at about $25,000 per year. But we have a ton of scholarships. We have merit-based scholarships that are going to be based on your GPA, starting at a 93 unweighted GPA, and they go up to um, a 95 and above with about a $4,500 scholarship, as well as a lot of endowed scholarships that were money given to the college from our alumni. Um, and they can range from anywhere from $500 to about $5,000, and they can be based on your GPA, they can be based on your location where you graduated high school, or the major that you're going into. So there's a lot of opportunities for scholarships. We are a D3 school. We have 25 NCAA D3 teams, um, as well as 131 NCAA championships. Our Cortica game is our rival football game against Ithaca College. Last year was the first year that we played that at MetLife Stadium. So all of our football players do get to play on an NFL field. And we broke the, the D3 record with the most attended D3 collegiate game, um, which was pretty cool. And then about 60, 650 students are athletes. So not all of our students are student athletes at the, at the varsity level. We do have a lot of club sports as well as, as well as intramural sports. So whatever kind of degree of athletic you, you are interested in, we kind of have it all. We also have over 80 clubs on campus between every major has their own club. We have a student-led radio show, news show, uh, magazine, newspaper. We have all sorts of um, musically inclined clubs. We have things like acapella. Um, we've had Harry Potter clubs on campus, Nerf clubs on campus, a lot of different clubs. It only takes three students and a faculty member to create a club on campus. So there's always new things coming in and off. Um, we do require all of our students to stay on campus for their first two years. So about half of our student body lives on campus. We have a variety of different uh, style dorms. The top picture is going to show you a lot of different dorms in those um, different buildings on campus. We have high rise, low rise, suite style. Um, the first building that you see is where the Jets stayed. We did host the Jets training camp. So it's pretty state of the art. The NFL team did stay with us. And then our Student Life Center was a multi-million dollar facility that was brought onto campus. It hosts our newest dining hall and then all of our gym facilities. So we have a rock wall, an indoor track, a cycling room. We have courts for basketball and volleyball. We have an indoor pool, a golf simulator, as well as all your cardio and weight equipment as well. So a lot of students are using this. We have 2,500 people per day in this center. I do always like to note that our dining hall in this facility has a cookie warmer on standby. So you can always have gym and junk food, which is something that we like. It's a little bit of balance for all of our students. Uh, we have 10 dining facilities on campus. We have a lot of grab and go, um, grab some coffee and a breakfast sandwich, as well as all you care to eat. So these are pictures of our all you care to eat. They have a lot of different style food. Um, we have theme nights and it changes daily in our website. It has all the different style food that will be served on that day. Um, so you can always know what's coming and who's in there. We have video cameras that show exactly how busy each line is, which is pretty cool when you're deciding where to eat. As far as our majors, we have a variety of majors. We were often known for a teacher school. We have the largest and most comprehensive education um, program in the state of New York. So you'll see that we have a lot of teacher programs, um, but a lot of our other programs are really popular. Sports management, sports studies, speech and hearing science. You can go all the way to the master's program with that, um, as well as all of our science and all of our ologies, criminology, psychology, sociology. Those are all very popular majors, um, but they all offer a little something different we have a ton of internship opportunities. Our career services office is awesome. They help to place students with on-campus jobs, off-campus jobs, internships and externships, and then they will stay with you while you're an alumni as well. 98% um, of our graduates have either a master's degree or a job um, upon graduation from SUNY Cortland. One third of our graduates have a job before they even walk across the stage. Um, but that is really where I'll leave you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I hope you are enjoying your uh, fall. Alyssa, thanks to you and SUNY Cortland. Up next, you get to hear from Wells College. Hello, hi everyone. My name is Gia Varnan and I'm from Wells College. I'm one of the admissions counselors 
And I'm also an alum. I graduated in 2014, so I can speak to Wells as a student and a staff member. And if you have any questions at all, one of my colleagues, Melinda from Wells, is also in the Q&A, so she can also answer any questions that you might have, but let's begin. So where is Wells located? So Wells is located in central New York. We're really close to Ithaca and Syracuse, but we're right on Cayuga Lake. Um, Wells is a small school. Our student population is less than 500 students total. That means we have a student to faculty ratio of nine to one. You, your professors get to know you, your faculty members become your mentors, and there's a lot of opportunity for you to be part of a very close knit community. So academics. So Wells is a private liberal arts institution. So that means we have a variety of majors, but our most popular majors the ones you're gonna find the most of the student body gravitating towards is going to be business, psychology, English, and the sciences. We also have what we call, you know, a four plus one, uh, three plus two programs, meaning, you know, a short amount of time for multiple degrees. And we have that with partner universities for an MBA, education, engineering, nursing, and one of our unique programs is called the cross registration program. So what that means is whatever Wells does not offer, you can go take at no additional cost at a different institution like Cornell University, Ithaca College and Cayuga Community College. For example, Wells does not offer Korean as a language class, but hey, if you find that in one of those three other schools, go take that, you know, go expand your horizons as a Wells student. So we're gonna talk about some student life. So yes, we have clubs, organizations, we have uh, residence halls. So you probably know them as dorms, but it's different because we are as a residential campus. Yes, we have commuters, but we have that sense of community. Your upper class and most likely will be your resident advisor to be that person on campus who you could go to if you have any problems. And we, you know, a lot of team building, a lot of community um, building will make it home for you. And we have a lot of traditions. We are a D3 school as well. And we have a lot of sports like softball, baseball, basketball, volleyball, field hockey, soccer, lacrosse, swimming, volleyball. And you don't have to be a recruit. My senior and never picked up a tennis record before, but I tried out and got onto the tennis team my senior year. So it's that time to try something new and expand your horizons and kind of like find yourself, build, build that up. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the admissions process. So we are on the Common App and we also have our own Wells app. Both are free. We'll, we only need your high school transcript and two letters of recommendations. Now you can send your college essay, but we don't need that. We understand that everyone can express themselves through written word the best. So that's why we call it the unique expression. Are you a dancer, performer, an athlete? Do you have something, a recording, uh, your resume? How can you best express yourself? We have a holistic admissions process. We want to get to know you as a person. And we also have, you know, we offer merit-based scholarships. So that is not a separate process. As soon as you apply, you are automatically considered for a scholarship. And another thing that Wells offers is internships. We have study abroad. We have undergraduates who have done research, who have even published their research as well. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to like I said, expand your horizons, make Wells your home, and we are test optional. We do not require that SAT or the ACT, and we do not require a interview. We do encourage a campus visit. We are open for in-person, personal, individual visits. And if you can't come to campus, we do have virtual visits. We do offer that to be led by current students so they could walk you through a virtual tour of our campus and you could ask them any questions you can, like what is it like to be a Wells student? So 
these are the social media handles. This is my contact information. That's actually my cell phone, call or text me. We also have the general admissions email and phone number, but learn more about Wells. What else can I tell you in six minutes? Courtney, I'm all done. Thank you so much, dear Varna, to you and to Wells College. Wow, we've already learned so many great things about um, the institution so far, but we still have two to go. So next up, you get the opportunity to hear from Ithaca, Ithaca College. Thanks, Courtney. I will warn everybody, it's bedtime at my house, so you might hear a little bit of background noise here from my, uh, my new coworker, my three-year-old toddler. Um, let me introduce myself first. My name is Jessica kowaleski Dietrich. I am the Associate Director for Regional Recruitment here at Ithaca. So happy to connect with you guys this evening. Thank you for being here. Well, let's get started. I also love to clarify our location in upstate New York, hence the theme tonight. So we are located, surprise, in Ithaca, New York. So about four hours from New York City, six hours from Boston and Pittsburgh. If you're looking at uh, this map of New York State here, you can get a better idea. And we're considered a medium-sized college. We have approximately 6,000 undergraduates enrolled at IC but average class size, only about 17. So people say all the time, this is the best of both worlds. You have a foot in each camp. You have the resources that larger institutions would have, but you have the small intimate class sizes, the ability for your faculty to get to know you. You'll hear students say all the time they're over their professor's homes for dinner, non-COVID circumstances, of course, uh, but it's really a very warm, I'd say welcoming type of community. And our students come from all over the globe. So we are predominantly a residential type of campus and community with over 70% of our students living on campus. So Ithaca offers about 100 different majors and 70 different minors across our five schools, those being the School of Business, the Park School of Communications, the School of Health Science and Human Performance, the School of Humanities and Sciences, and last but certainly not least, our founding school, which is our School of Music. So our School of Music, we were founded actually as a, originally as a music conservatory. We've evolved into being this comprehensive liberal arts college. So all of our programs are based within the liberal arts. Every student will complete a liberal arts um, core curriculum, if you will, in conjunction with their degree path. But we also have professional degree programs across the health sciences like physical therapy, occupational therapy, business, communications, et cetera. Most of our students start in our exploratory program, which is a very supportive approach to students who are perhaps not sure what they'd like to study. So a little, a little bit of a, of a guided approach to being undecided. Most of our students will engage in hands-on learning while they're with us. This stems from our roots of being a music conservatory. We know students learn best through active practice. So whether that be through research, through internships, through performance opportunities, through using the student-run radio stations, television stations, the stock trading room, et cetera, every student is anticipated to have a hands-on experience at IC while they're with us. And so oh, close to 90% is our placement rate into either full-time graduate study or full-time employment when students graduate from our campus. We have over 200 student organizations and clubs that you can, in, that you can join an extensive list, a little bit of everything for everyone, Division Three athletics. Uh, we mentioned earlier my colleague from Portland, the Cortica Jug, one of my favorite traditions that we have happening, um, but really a lot of different ways that students can get involved. And then of course, Ithaca is gorgeous. We're lo located in one of the most well-known college towns in the country. We share the city of Ithaca with Cornell University. So every fall, we have approximately 30,000 college students between our two campuses who converge onto the Ithaca region. And so there's more restaurants per capita in Ithaca, New York, than there are in New York City, plus a lot of outdoors activities, waterfalls, hiking to take advantage of. In terms of admission, we have three admission timelines. We're fast approaching our first. November 1st is around the corner. We take a very holistic approach on how we evaluate our applicants. And so we really look at the students very, I'd say, well-roundedly. We've been test optional since 2012. This is really coming into play this year as we've seen just the lack of access to taking SAT and ACT exams. And we very much focus on the curriculum a student has taken. But I do want to emphasize we're going to be paying particular attention to all of the nuanced details we're going to find as it pertains to how this pandemic has impacted students this, this, uh, this year. And so with that, 
I'm going to give you guys a one minute tour of campus before I turn it over to my colleagues. So I hope you enjoy. Hey, welcome to Ithaca College. We only have a minute to take a tour. Let's go. Uh, but we're hosting a whole bunch of other virtual events. So you can check out our website. We're doing a director of admission conversation series, for instance, student run photo tours, information sessions. So check out our website for more information. But Courtney, I'll pass it back to you so we can continue forward. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Jessica and to Ithaca College. Our final, our final presentation tonight will be from SUNY Maritime College. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Ridge Robinson. I serve as an admissions counselor um, for our undergraduate students at SUNY Maritime. I also serve as the head cross country coach in athletics with SUNY Maritime. And so I'd like to welcome you to this video presentation. To start off, just wanna show you guys campus. We're located in the Bronx along the East River on a small thin peninsula of land. Um, we're in a quiet neighborhood, Throg's Neck. Um, it's off the, the subway path here. Um, so we're in the, the, the concrete jungle of the city, but um, we have a nice um, quiet environment for you to learn within. Um, to tell you a little bit more about us though, uh, SUNY Maritime is the second smallest SUNY in the state of New York. We have roughly 1800 students. It's comprised of two different types of um, campus communities. There's uh, the regimental um, community and the civilian community. Uh, both communities take classes together. The difference between them is that the regimental students are pursuing a license to work on commercial ships. The civilian students are pursuing solely degrees here to work on land. Um, it's really the only difference um, between those students. They do share um, similar experiences on campus through our 80 plus student um, organizations and clubs. Um, we also have 13 NCAA Division III varsity sports that's comprised of our regimental and civilian students. Um, of our academics, uh, we have 13 nationally recognized programs, so we are more focused on specific industries, five of which are ABET accredited engineering programs. Um, because of our smaller stature, um, classroom sizes tend to average around 21 students which lends to be about a 15 to one teacher to student ratio or student to teacher ratio. So you find yourself, um, the longer you're at Maritime in a more personalized classroom, instructors know you by name, um, you have a, a more personalized relationship with the students that you're pursuing degrees with. Um, of the academic programs that we have though, I mentioned five are bachelors of engineering. Um, we offer a BE here it's more schematic and design oriented. Um, from a uh, academic standpoint, I'd say engineering stands out as our most sought after degrees. It's what we're known for. Um, they are physical in nature. So we lend to things like electrical, mechanical, facilities, marine engineering, naval architecture. Um, naval Arc is actually our most unique. We're one in six colleges that have it, offer it. Um, naval architecture deals with shipbuilding. So from the hall all the way to the control deck. Um, mechanical electrical tend to be more um, um, general as they apply to various engineering fields. Facilities is more construction, more building, plant management, and then marine engineering ship specific. Um, in terms of bachelors of science, we offer business, 
marine environmental science and humanities here. We have three business options from international transportation and trade, marine operations and marines transportation. Um, marine environmental science is the study of water bodies, how it affects plant and animal life. It's more of a research um, marine oriented degree. Maritime studies is our liberal arts, um, well-rounded arts, history, law, um, you know, policy making. It's for somebody that may want to go to law school, um, may want to work in, you know, government related to maritime law and policy. And then we also have an associates in applied science. It deals with marine technology. It's for somebody that wants to work on small vessels, things like yachts, tugs, ferries. Um, now, in addition to that, we do have some master's programs. We have an extension of international transportation and trade called international transportation management. It's one of the unique programs because as an international transportation and trade business major, you can actually earn your master's in a total of five years along with your bachelor's. So um, it's a unique way to skip a year of, of education and earn both bachelor's and master's. We also have uh, maritime and naval studies, which is an extension of maritime studies. Um, in terms of professional experience, we're a school of options. We have what's called the Regiment of Cadets, which is one of the lifestyles on campus. This is a quasi military lifestyle here at Maritime. If you were to look at our website or come on our campus, you would see students in khaki uniforms. They are in the uh, Regiment of Cadets. The Regiment of Cadets is a lifestyle catered towards preparing students to work on commercial ships. As a result, students that are often in the Regiment of Cadets are pursuing the United States Coast Guard license. What it is, is it's a military um, offered license to work on commercial ships. It does not require you to serve in the military. It enables you to work on things like cargo ships, cruise liners, yachts, tugs, and ferries, you know, all the way from unlimited size vessels to limited smaller size vessels. For students that aren't looking to work on ships, though, we offer professional internships in the summer. And this is where our civilian students essentially get experience. They will do internships with employers um, that we've established they will um, gain ex necessary experience. Engineers are required to do two years of uh, two summers, essentially, of internships. Um, bachelor's of Science students are required to do one. The average student here though, does about two to three. And then on the off side of that, we also have one of the largest NROTC programs here. So for students that want to serve, want to be in the military, we have reserves as well as active duty through Navy, Marine Corps, um, Army, and there is some Air Force aspects as well. So those are some of the options. Um, in terms of where we shine, we're a school focused on getting students into career paths. So internships and career placement are held at the highest regard here. We average about 90% plus career placement. So students coming out of here typically have um, obtained a position in their field within three months of graduating. But I would go as far to say that a large majority of our students are hired prior to even graduating. And you'll see on the left internships, places like Con Ed for our electrical engineers, um, PepsiCo for our inter international transportation and trade students. Um, we've got the Norfolk Naval Shipyard for like Naval Arch students. I think what's most important though is the kind of salaries our students command. Uh, a land-based engineer here can make anywhere from 70 to 90K their first year out of college. Um, we had a student in our office make 89K uh, working for IBM this year. We've had students go to work for shipping companies as engineers making over 100K their first year out. Um, bachelor's of Science students, depending on whether they're working on ships or on land, can make anywhere from 50 to 90K starting. So the large you know, difference in salary and the options these students have is what really appeals to them. They have so many more options than your average student because of the, the, the uh, water-based and land opportunities. I'm so sorry, we need to move on, Bridge. Thank you to you and SUNY Maritime. I'd now like to invite all of our um, presenters to turn back on their cameras and give them up the opportunity to either one, share something that they didn't get to share during their presentation, two, um, share a fun fact about their college or institution or possibly a fun campus tradition, or just answer a question that you didn't get to answer live um, that came in through the Q&A tonight. So we'll go in the same order that we presented. Um, first up, Clarkson University. Yeah, thank you so much, Courtney. And I saw a lot of great questions uh, come through in the Q&A. So thank you for all the students that are joining us this evening. And um, so if you do have any questions, I think I sent out my email um, to everybody that did ask, but my email is just pdustin 
at clarkson.edu for any students that have further questions after this evening. So I would say a couple just important things that I may not have had time to share. We are going test optional for the first time this year. Uh, so students that may not have had the chance to take their SATs or their ACTs, we fully understand, um, you know, kind of the different circumstances going on this year. And we don't want anybody to be at a disadvantage. I think that Clarkson across the board, uh, we're always very accommodating in those measures. Same thing when it comes to our financial aid and appeals process as well. Um, so the one thing that I do want to announce is that we are taking in-person and virtual visits on our campus. You can go right to our website, to our visit page, tons and tons of different options there. And I think, again, being a smaller campus, I really push taking advantage of our virtual meetings with our faculty members that we have going on right now in person and tons of virtual tour options with our student ambassadors. So that's a great way to actually speak to our students as well um, and get their experiences on our campus campus. And then I would also say to our clerks and chats. So again, if you have any questions, or if you want to schedule a one on one meeting with me, uh, my email again, it's pdustin at clarkson.edu. My schedule is very flexible, as I'm sure everybody says on this panel, uh, meeting with students uh, to talk about your interest in this totally different world that we're experiencing this year. So I would say one other thing that really sticks out about us, and then I'll pass it along to our other panelists, is the variety of professional experiences and the more unique experiences that we have on our campus that I didn't really get to highlight. So we do require all of our students, again, to complete some type of internship co-op, which is essentially working full time for about eight-ish months um, you know, while you're in school, um, or some type of research while you're on our campus. And our students oftentimes we'll complete several of those opportunities. But a couple cool ones that I didn't get to mention, one is our Trudeau Summer Scholars Program, which actually takes place right in the heart of the Adirondacks in Saranac Lake. We are right outside the Adirondacks, absolutely gorgeous here in upstate New York. Um, so you get a lot of students in the biomolecular sciences that take advantage of the research that goes on there over the summer. And as a history person, I think it's very cool. Um, they started out as a tuberculosis research institution, so they do a lot with, again, bio molecular sciences there. And then the Adirondack semester is one that I always really like to talk about too. So the Adirondack semester again takes place right in Saranac Lake. Um, you get to spend a full summer fully immersed in the heart of the Adirondacks uh, doing summer re or spring research rather and presenting that at the end. Um, so with that in closing, um, one other thing too, again, right outside the Adirondacks, also very close to Canada. So again, if you love hockey or if you end up loving hockey while you're at Clarkson's campus, we're about one and a half to two hours away from two major NHL teams. So I think that's a couple minutes. I'll, I'll let others share um, going from there. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of time um, left, everyone. So um, next up, let's hear from Melissa at SUNY Cortland. I think one of my favorite student traditions that we have on campus is our, um, our student union does a tabling fair um, right in the middle of campus each, each fall and each spring. So all of our student clubs, our sports teams, our Greek life, um, any extracurricular activities, our study abroad program, they all come outside and, and have tables kind of leading the stairs and lining the stairs so all of our students can see exactly what opportunities we have on campus. There's a lot of internship tables, externship tables, clubs. Um, so a lot of different opportunities are shared during that. And I always think that that's such a fun time for people to get to know each other, as well as get to know people on campus. Um, I would just like to add that we have our open house is going to be virtual this year, as I'm sure all of ours is going to be. Uh, we have a variety of different student-led tours. Um, we have a chat online that you can chat with admissions teams. So we have a lot of different opportunities virtually this year, and then next year we hope to be back in person. Um, but we hope to see you virtually at an event, or if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, and we wish you the best of luck in your college search. Thank you. Next up, let's hear from Wells. Me again. So when I was a student, one of my favorite traditions was the bell. So we have one of the student uh, groups is the bell ringer. So mealtimes, the bells were rang. When I was a student, I love naps, still love naps. So that was a great way for me to wake up from a beautiful nap and like, okay, it's dinner time, I'm gonna head down to the dining hall and you know, replenish myself after a long day of you know, studying hard. Um, but you know, wells, the bells, they are rung for you know, graduation, for weddings, other like baby announcements. It's a really important part of the wells community from multiple, that spans multiple generations. And what else is coming up is our virtual open house 
will be taking place Saturday, November 14th at 11. So register. If not, it's going to be streamed over Facebook Live. So Wells College on Facebook. All right, who's up next? I love the bells. That's such a fun, um, a fun thing. Um, next up, Ithaca College. Thanks. So I have to go to our tradition, which is called Senior Swim. So you probably saw in some of my collateral, the fountain on campus, which is a focal point on campus. And so there is a myth that if you were to step foot into that fountain, you will not graduate from Ithaca College. Something will happen to prevent you from graduating. And students take this very seriously. So seniors, when they finish their finals the week prior to their commencement ceremony, all as a cohort together uh, will go into the fountain. And if you're curious what this looks like, it's a lot of fun. You can um, YouTube Ithaca College Senior Swim. There's a lot of video footage on there, but it's a moment that you look forward to. It's a tradition that you look you know, up to your senior comrades who are going through that and look forward to that moment yourself. So, and it's a moment for us because we see you guys really achieve that. So. A rite of passage, absolutely. And finally, Ridge from SUNY Maritime. Yeah, so uh, I'd say one thing that I didn't get to touch on would be the fact that we are going test optional as well um, because we're in the SUNY system. Um, we tend to go with a holistic approach with our application process. Um, so we'll be looking more intently at high school transcripts, um, your letter of rec, your essay. We want to know what kind of student you are and whether or not you're a good fit here. And then another aspect that I didn't get to touch on, but I think is very unique to us is that, um, you know, the regiment of cadet students, the students that are pursuing Coast Guard license, they go on summer cruise in the summer. It's through our training vessel. Um, our training vessel is uh, pushing 20 plus years. We're actually getting a new vessel in 2023. It's gonna be state-of-the-art multi-million dollar um, vessel, which is gonna allow us to go uh, essentially all over the world. Um, we have visited places such as uh, Iceland, Mallorca, Portugal, Spain, Scotland. Um, we'll be able to do much more with that ship. They train on the ship, they take classes, and then they get to sightsee. So it essentially functions as a study abroad in a lot of senses because they get to see a lot of different countries um, during their time in the summers. That sounds like an incredible opportunity for your students. I would like to leave um, the audience with just a quick piece of advice. These professionals that you got to hear from tonight are really here for you. Um, they, there's someone like them at all of the colleges and institutions that you're most seriously considering and they want to get, answer your questions. We know that things have been really difficult over the last seven, eight months and um, they are here to answer anything that you have. So don't rely on College Confidential or what so-and-so's brother's um, aunt said, like really get the information from the experts. You might've known that you had your family to help you, maybe school counselors to help you, but you probably didn't realize that you had these awesome people um, there to help you through this process. So try to enjoy the rest of your senior year. There's still lots to celebrate and still awesome milestones that you're gonna be able to, to reach. So. With that, I would like to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, as you log off, there will be a quick four question survey and we hope that you'll provide us um, with some feedback. The recording to this session tonight will be available within one week um, of our presentation tonight on that same website where you registered along with other recordings from other the other sessions that rec were recorded um, both today and yesterday. Thank you so much and have a great night everyone.